Well, welcome back to the third episode of The Perfect Storm. In the last three weeks, we, we have really been on an adventure that we didn't see coming. And I am so grateful because God is speaking so powerfully through his word. Uh, you know that's why we have our Bibles, right? In Romans chapter 15, uh, 14, 5, it says everything that was written in the Holy Scriptures was for our benefit so that we could learn, so that we could see the examples of perseverance and find hope. So this is exactly what God has been doing these last few weeks. He's been showing us these amazing examples of perseverance in the Bible and through the life of Paul. In part one, God spoke to us in the storm. We noted that even when we are on the perfect will of God and right on course with everything he's called us to do, storms are going to come. But God's going to be with us in the storm, and storms will stretch our faith. In part two, God spoke to us in the shipwreck. And we witnessed two things that commonly happen in times of crisis. Number one, a crisis has a way of kind of revealing the storm that was already going on on the inside. And if we allow it, a crisis can be a great opportunity for us to address those inner storms and find healing and victory in those times. A crisis also has a way of revealing who the real soldiers are, right? A crisis awakens that inner fight inside of us and brings perseverance to the surface so that we have all the strength and the, and the perseverance that we need right when we need it the most. Last week in Paul's story, we saw some powerful survival tips for facing life's shipwreck situations. I'll review. When we face devastation, we can take courage and trust God's promise to see us through to the other side. We also need to stay aboard. No matter how tempted we are to jump ship, we also know that prayer plus fasting equals power for breaking strongholds and, and bringing people into freedom. And as believers, we know we just have to hold on and just keep swimming because even if or when everything around you is falling apart, there is still hope. I've been waiting for three weeks to tell you that there's hope beyond your storm. And in our story, Paul, along with many other prisoners, boarded a ship to Rome. And in charge of the prisoners was a Roman officer named Julius who was very kind to Paul. Also on board on this ship was a captain, a crew, and tagging along were two of Paul's closest and bravest friends, Luke and Aristarchus. A total of 276 people. And after 14 days of terror and typhoon strength winds, the ship eventually neared land, crashed against the rocks along the shore, and the ship began to smash and collapse into pieces. That's where we left off last week in Luke's final words, Act chapter 27, verse 44. Everyone escaped safely to shore. We made it. And all the sailors and the soldiers and the crewmates said, Huzzah! Come on, we made it! And all the soldiers and the sailors and the crew said, Huzzah! Come on, say it like you mean it. Come on, we all said, Huzzah! Yes, we made it. We all made it safe to shore. <laughs> we made it. And by the way, can I just remind you and encourage you to never stop celebrating that you made it. Don't stop celebrating that. You made it through that health crisis. Don't you forget that. You made it through the abuse. You made it through the addiction. How many? You made it through. You made it through that big mistake. You made it. You made it through the divorce. You made it through the financial crisis. You made it through those sleepless nights. You made it. May you never forget 
Never stop celebrating and never stop singing on the other side. You know, this past week I was visiting with my dad. He lives in Hagerstown in an assisted living facility and my visit with him coincided with a church service that was going on for the residents there. And I took my dad and I wheeled him down there and we sat together and, and uh, these precious people, shout out to Harvest Baptist Church in Hagerstown. Shout out to those precious people for having the heart to minister and anybody else who has a heart to minister to the elderly. And these beautiful folks ministered and had church service to all the residents there in one stowaway, me. <laughs> and they led us in singing the old hymns. And me and my dad had the best time singing those hymns together. The raging storms around us beat, a shelter in the time of storm. We'll never leave our safe retreat, a shelter in the time of storm. Oh, Jesus is the rock in a weary land, a weary land, a weary land. Oh, Jesus is the rock in a weary land, a shelter in a time of storm. My dad is 92.5 years old. <laughs> and he doesn't remember everything about everything. But somehow that man remembers every time God delivered him out of something. And I am so grateful that my dad is still singing about the goodness and the faithfulness of God. And if you have your Bibles today, we're going to be diving into Acts chapter 28. Starting right at the top, verse 1 says, Once we learned we were safe on shore, we learned that we were on the island of Malta. Now, just by the way, I looked it up. Malta is a place, and it's beautiful. It's amazing. It's right on the uh, right near Sicily, one of the five islands, the, the five Maltese islands. So, verse two: the people of the island were very kind to us. It was cold and rainy, so they built a fire on the shore to welcome us. Guys, be encouraged. There is favor beyond your storm. Can you imagine? Every, after everything that this seasick squad had been through, they landed on this island, a beautiful tropical island in a Mediterranean paradise, greeted by a group of nice natives and a campfire sing-along. Imagine that. Picture that, if you will, for a second. Picture it. Imagine that landscape and what that must have been like. Oh, just sit back and you'll hear a tale, a tale of a fateful trip that started from this tropic port aboard this Roman ship. <laughs> the mate was a mighty sailing man, the skipper brave and sure. The passengers set sail that day for a three-Sunday tour. A three-Sunday tour. The weather started getting rough. The mighty ship was tossed. If not for the faith of a man named Paul, the sailors would be lost. The sailors would be lost. The weather started getting rough. The mighty sh Oh, I said that. So join us here in the week, my friend. You'll get us sure to get a smile. 276 castaways here on Malta Isle. <laughs> anyway, can you tell I'm excited? Can you tell I'm excited? Because I have been waiting for three weeks to tell you there is favor beyond your storm. It's favor beyond your storm if you'll just stay faithful, if you'll just stay in faith, if you'll just hold on to God's promises. When this storm is over, you won't be in the same position you were before. The storm is going to reposition you in Jesus' name. There will be favor waiting for you on the other side, but we have to take it in stride, folks. <laughs> Because in Acts chapter 28, verse 3, it says, As Paul gathered an armful of sticks and was laying them on the fire, a poisonous snake, driven out by the heat, bit him on the hand. The people of the island saw it hanging from Paul's hand. Josh, are you getting nervous? <laughs> and said to each other, <clears throat> Murderer, no doubt. 
Though he escaped the sea, justice will not permit him to live. Somebody say, but Paul shook off the snake into the fire and was unharmed. Can I remind you of something today? The devil bites. And just a little bit of a reality check here. If the storm didn't kill you, he might come at you himself. But I'm here to encourage someone here today to shake it off. Shake it off. The enemy may come at you. He may even sink his fangs into you, but don't even flinch. Don't flinch. Don't give him any authority over you. Don't give him any attention, than you, more attention than you have to. Shake it off. I know it hurts. I know it stings. Shake it off and shake it off quickly. Or his venom will poison your spirit. You have a choice today. You can lament in your woundedness. You can cry out in your pain. You can hold up your wounds and talk about them and show them to the people around you. And you might get some attention and you might get a little bit of pity. Or you can shake it off and refuse to give the enemy a stronghold in your life or a fang hold in your life. Now you might say, but Pastor Beth, people are mean. People hurt me, Pastor Beth. People are making false accusations against me, Pastor Beth. I know. I know. But we can't let that get in our spirit. We can't let it. And the sooner we shake it off, the better. Shake it off. We can't, you can't afford to let that venom get inside of you. When you're offended, shake it off as fast as you can. As fast as you can. And if there's one thing that I've learned in the last year or so, I learned this. The sooner we heal from our wounds, the sooner we can start helping others to heal from theirs. Guys, there's a miracle beyond this storm. And I don't want you to miss it because you're distracted by your pain and your disappointment. I don't want you to miss it. Acts 28 verse five says, but Paul shook off the snake. Somebody say, shake it off. He shook it off into the fire and was unharmed. The people waited for him to swell up or suddenly drop dead. But when they had waited a long time, they saw that he wasn't harmed. So they changed their minds and decided, well, he must be a god. <laughs> okay, so here's a not so fun fact. The people that have spoken harshly over you might one day, after they wait a long time, they might decide to change their mind about you, but the thing is they might just move on to the next wrong assumption. We gotta shake that off too. We gotta shake that off too. Don't worry about it. Because guys, I've been waiting three weeks to tell you that there's vindication beyond your storm. Vindication is coming. Vindication, God's vindication. I'm not talking about righteous Rambo on a, a vigilante. I'm not talking about us rising up and fighting. Nope, I'm talking about God's pure and timely vindication in our life. Psalm 37 says, don't worry about the wicked or envy those who do wrong for like grass, they soon fade away. Like spring flowers, they soon wither. Trust in the Lord and do good. Then you will live safely in the land and prosper. Take delight in the Lord and he will give you your heart's desires. Commit everything you do to the Lord. We're talking about vertical here. We're vertical. We're not, we don't have our eyes around us. We have our eyes straight up. We commit everything that we do around to the Lord. We trust him and he will help you. This is my favorite part. Verse six, he will make your innocence radiate like the dawn and the justice of your cause will shine like the noonday sun. Be still in the presence of the Lord and wait patiently for him to act. Don't worry about evil people who prosper or fret about their wicked schemes. Stop being angry. 
Turn from your rage. Do not lose your temper. It only leads to harm. For the wicked will be destroyed, but those who trust in the Lord will possess the land. Those who what? Trust. We gotta trust God. Trust that God's fighting our battles. Trust that God is your vindicator. And trust that God is going to make every wrong right. God is going to make the justice of your cause shine like the noonday sun. Wait patiently for him to act. Wait patiently for God's vindication. Let's read on. Verse 7. It says, near the shore where we landed was an estate belonging to... Publius. I don't know. Publi Publius. What do you think? Publius or Publius? It says he was... The, okay. It says he was the chief official, so I might just call him the Grand Poobah. <laughs> He welcomed us and he treated us kindly for three days. Picture it. Paradise Island, Mediterranean paradise, nice natives, campfire, sing-alongs, vindication, miracles, and now the Grand Poobah comes. <laughs> As it happened, verse 8, the Grand Poobah's father was ill with fever and dysentery. Okay, there's a concern here. Paul went in and prayed for him. And laying hands on him, he healed him. And then all the other sick people on the island came and they were healed as well. See? See what happens? The sooner Paul was healed from his wounds, the sooner he could get busy helping others to heal from theirs. Guys, I also want you to know that there is an anointing beyond your storm. Paul came out of his storm with an anointing to heal people. An anointing. That's just spiritual talk, meaning God has favor on you and is a special, unique empowerment on your life to do something unique and special, a special work. Now, I don't know if you noticed, but over the last year, God has been repeating this theme here at church. He's been repeating this theme about what's on the other side of our adverse situations. Jesus, if you recall, went into the wilderness and he became weak and it was not easy. But on the other side of his wilderness, he came out with an anointing to preach good news, to set the captives free, to open blind eyes, to release prisoners and declare the favor of God. We as a church have been through a valley in the last year or so. But in that valley, guys, if you recall, that's where our good shepherd stepped in and prepared a table. In the midst of our enemies, he anointed our head with oil. And it was in the valley that our cup overflowed. You might be going through a storm right now. But if you stay in faith and if you stay faithful, I believe that you are going to come out of this storm with a unique anointing, a unique strength, a unique favor, a unique tenacity, a vindication, and an empowerment of the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name, stay faithful, stay on course. Guys, that's why, if you recall, the storm is so perfect because the storm gives us a platform for God's power. The storm gives us a glimpse of God's glory. The storm starts to reveal a picture of God's purpose in our life today. There is an anointing beyond your storm. There's an anointing beyond our storm. Paul had an anointing to bring healing to people. And after the Grand Poobah's father was healed. Luke, our historian, wrote this in verse 9. Then all the other sick people on the island came, and they were healed also. And as a result, Luke said, we were showered with honor. And when the time came to sail, the people supplied us with everything we would need for the trip. Wow. Do you see it? There's honor and there's provision beyond your storm. Do you remember all that they had lost? They lost their way. They lost precious cargo. 
They lost their lifeboat. They even lost their entire ship. And I don't know what this means for you, but I'm hanging on to the promise that everything that was lost will be restored. Everything. Some of you need to hold on to that promise. Everything that was lost will be restored. I don't know who, but it's, he's going to restore. I don't know when, but he's going to restore. I don't know how, but he's going to restore. He's going to restore everything that's been lost, whether in this lifetime or the next. James chapter 1, verse 12 said, Blessed is the one who perseveres under trial. Because having stood the test, the person will receive the crown of life that the Lord has promised to those who love him. Honor and provision are on the other side of your storm. And I love what Luke, our historian, wrote next in verse 11. I'm going to read this in the message version because I love it. Luke says, we spent a wonderful three months on Malta. They treated us royally took care of all our needs and outfitted us for the rest of the journey. And when an Egyptian ship that had wintered there in the harbor prepared to leave for Italy, we got on board. The ship had a carved Gemini for its figurehead, the heavenly twins. Verse 12, we put in at Syracuse for the three days and then went up to the coast of Regium. Two days later, with the wind out of the south, we sailed into the Bay of Naples, and we found Christians there and stayed with them for a week. Wow. Does that not sound amazing? Verse 14. And then we came to Rome. Friends in Rome heard we were on the way and came out to meet us. One group got as far as the Apian Court. Another group met us at the three taverns. Emotionally packed meetings. As you can well imagine, Paul, brimming over with praise, led us in prayers of thanksgiving. And when we actually entered Rome, they let Paul live in his own private quarters with a soldier who had been assigned to guard him. So are you catching all of this? <laughs> Three months of royal treatment on a tropical island. Honey, are you listening? <laughs> a two-week all expenses paid in the Mediterranean paradise on a cruise. Surrounded by amazing friends. We're all coming. Prayer, praise, and celebration, and a private room with your own security? You kidding? Suddenly, Paul didn't look at all like where he had been or what he had gone through. And I don't know what adversity you guys are coming out of, but I'd waited for weeks to tell you there's friendship and there's praise and there's thanksgiving beyond your storm, and you won't look at all like what you've been through. You're not going to look at all like what you've been through. Nope, because God's got a reputation to uphold. We see it throughout the Bible. The three Hebrew teenagers, after they went through the fire, not a hair on their head was singed. And the Bible says they came out of that fire, not even the smell of smoke was on them. Think about the demon-possessed man on the other side of the lake. The Bible said he had legion of demons, several demons inside of him. But after Jesus set him free, the Bible talks about how he cleaned up, he went home, he spruced, 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 he spiffied up and spruced up. And he became a preacher. He didn't look at all like what he had been through. He didn't look at all like he had been through. None of that. The demon possessed man. How about the prodigal son, guys? After who knows how long of eating with the pigs, after he came to his senses, he found himself in a royal robe, new shoes on his feet, new ring on his finger, and home eating a meal that was fit for a king. He didn't look at all like what he had been through. And I'm here to tell somebody, there's favor, vindication, and anointing beyond your storm. There's honor, provision, friendship, praise, and thanksgiving on the other side of your storm. And you will not look at all like what you've been through. 
You're not gonna look like it. You're not gonna look like your divorce. You're not gonna look like your addiction. You don't look like you've been betrayed. Tell somebody next to you, you gotta elbow this. You don't look like what you've been through. As the worship team comes. You don't look like it. You don't look like what you've been through, Shannon. Not a thing. You don't look like it. God doesn't intend us to look like what we've been through. There's vindication. There's favor. There's honor and provision beyond the storm. There's friendship, thanksgiving, prayer and praise beyond the storm. There's anointing beyond the storm. Finally, there's a platform beyond your storm. Did you know that the very thing that you thought was going to take you out might be the very thing God uses to up your game? In Acts chapter 28, as it comes to a close, Paul has another opportunity to dress the new audience, the Roman Jewish citizens and leaders. The Bible says he gathered them up with something he just couldn't wait to say. Verse 20, he said, I asked you all to come here today so that we could get acquainted and so I could explain to you that I am bound with this chain because I believe that the hope of Israel, the Messiah, has already come. Well, look at Paul. He was given a platform to share his testimony. And by the amazing grace and the mind-blowing provision of God, this book of Acts comes to a close with Paul doing exactly what he had set out to do. Share the good news about the wonderful grace of God. And watch this, verse 30. For the next two years, Paul lived in Rome at his own expense. He welcomed all who visited him, boldly proclaiming the kingdom of God and teaching about the Lord Jesus Christ. Check this out. No one tried to stop him. (laughs) No one tried to stop him. Maybe he had an anointing on his life that made him unstoppable. And the devil said, I'm not even going to try for a while. (laughs) And I'm believing that for you. And I'm believing that for me. And I'm believing that for my family. And I'm believing that for our church. That once we get on mission, and once we get on course, and once we become faithful and determined that we are going to preach the gospel like never before, I'm going to tell you right now, nobody is going to be able to stop the church of Jesus Christ. Nobody is going to be able to stop you. Once you're doing that thing, you were called and created to be. On the other side of the storm, Paul went from being just one of the prisoners to being a voice of influence and wisdom and victory, a leader who rose in a crisis. The captive became commander. The prisoner became a preacher. There is platform beyond your storm today. And it might not be this platform. It might not be before hundreds or thousands, and I'm sorry, it might not be on a tropical island. But somebody somewhere is gonna find freedom in Jesus Christ because of your story. Can you thank God for that in Jesus' name?